G'day guys, Tells20 here, welcome back to Sunset City. Actually, one second. Welcome back to Sunset City. Today, I'm gonna to be building what I consider to be one of the most important parts of a city in City Skylines, and that's the city downtown. Not only is this place going to be a high density area for residential, office, and commercial, but it's also going to be a defining element. The skyline itself is gonna define what the city looks like from so many different angles, and today, we're just gonna have a go. We're gonna see what we can create, and I'll get some ideas from you guys. We will place some other buildings, maybe download some more from the Steam Workshop, Shop, and we'll keep on working on this thing over the next couple of weeks. Just like the rest of Sunset City, I am going to be taking inspiration from Miami, but doing things a little bit different with the downtown, you're going to be seeing some similarities, but also quite a lot of differences. But speaking of similarities, we are going to be building the monorail in this episode, which is inspired by the Metro Mover in Miami. A lot of people are telling me that this thing is pretty useless, very low capacity, doesn't really get you to anywhere you need to go. So I'm interested to see whether or not my Metro Mover is going to live up to the same fate. Is it going to be useful or is it going to be useless? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, before we get there though, we've got a couple of things to sort out. You know it, I know it, downtown is an absolute mess and we need to sort out a couple of bits and pieces. I start by demolishing some of the apartments in this area because they are no longer the apartments that I want to see growing in Sunset City. This was just a bit of a see if these are going to be the right style. These are Japanese apartments and I thought they were going to work but I actually need apartments that are more long than wide. And I'm actually in the process of updating a bunch of different buildings in Asset Editor just to make some that are a bit more detailed and are going to be tailor made for this series. So that's still a bit of a work in progress. It's been taking a bit of time to do. But uh, hopefully next episode you should see far better buildings being spawned in Sunset City. This highway connection absolutely needed to be changed. There was an underground section that went towards our outside connection and then this bridge stretches across the harbour and goes towards Sunset Beach, which we'll have to develop up shortly. But I decided to move that outside connection a little bit further down the track, a little bit further down into this bay area onto its own separate island. This area is inspired by the connection that goes onto Dodge Island, and I wanted to make something similar. This is also going to connect up to Dodge Island, but its main form is to get a uh, somewhat decent connection to the outside connection. And I don't know, I just sort of decided to change that double lane highway to just a single lane highway. And I don't know, maybe this is a bit temporary, maybe this is going to be permanent. What do you guys reckon? Do we need to make this a little bit more substantial or do you think it's going to work just the way it is? I honestly don't really mind it being a little bit of a smaller road. It functions totally fine. Here I am doing some line work on it. So, uh, you know, just trying to make it somewhat pretty, even though I think I might change it. I still haven't really quite decided yet. I then connect up the highway to the outside connection and I do a bit of up and down work, a bit of uh, work using Move It on our bridge, just to leave a little bit of space for the boats that are gonna be traveling underneath at some point. And as you can see, the roads down here, not too bad, at least at this point. They were absolutely red before when we had our outside connection, uh, the tunnel right next to the downtown. So I'm glad I ended up moving it, but this is not gonna stay because placing down these buildings is going to add a lot of pressure on our roads. So hopefully our monorail is going to save a little bit of that. Placing down a couple of these buildings, getting a bit of a feel for how they look and also the size of the skyline. I'm definitely gonna go for larger than what Miami was like in the 80s, but I definitely go too large for this time around. I, um, I think I need to reduce a couple of these and maybe place down a couple of different types of buildings, but I'm really just getting a feel for it, getting an idea of what it looks like and then just coming back and potentially changing where some of these sit and also getting a bit more of an idea of how they look in terms of the rest of the city. I always like to have a fairly large skyline, but you don't want to be placing buildings that are going to make the rest of the city look uh, much smaller. If anything, I'm trying to make the city look fairly large, but it's got to all work. It's all going to have some sort of balance. So it's always good just to fly out, have a look at the city, have a look at the skyline and see if things are starting to work out. I'm using Finance to scroll through the different assets that I've downloaded, just seeing what they look like within the actual game, seeing what they look like compared to one another, and also just trying to get a bit of an idea of where they're going to sit within the city. As you can see, I'm doing an absolutely terrible job at sticking within my budget, so I'm taking a little bit of a break from placing down the bigger ones and starting to place down where some of the cheaper things are going to sit. 
car parks, growables, apartments, all those sort of things that don't really cost as much money as the unique buildings that I'm placing down is saving a little bit of money. But unfortunately, a lot of the residents and a lot of the workers are pretty dissatisfied with the amount of services within the area. So it's time just to put a bit of a pin in placing down some of the workers and residents and start working on increasing some of the land value. Starting with a library within this area, just to boost a bit of the education. I really love this building, it's one of the reasons why I chose it, and I think it fits really well within the downtown, so I've just plopped it down there and decided to place a little bit of detail, some trees, some fences, some parking, and that's about it. I, you know, I'm just trying to do a bit of detail as I go, rather than spending a big chunk of time detailing one area. I like the idea of detailing things as they come up, this is quite different to how I used to build cities, where I just build in chunks and eventually would build a city. As you can see, we've already got kind of a city and now we're just sort of working on making things look tons better. But unfortunately, you do need money to make things look better, so I've taken a little bit of a break from building and decided to name some areas and build some districts and start figuring out where places are going to sit. Sunset Beach and Downtown are two of the more obvious places that we've already figured out, but we've also figured out the name of our big lake that sits in the middle of the Seminole State. Got a lot of name suggestions from you guys. The most popular one, which was also probably one of my favorite ones, was Lake Osceola. I turned this lake into a park district and decided to create a couple of different entrances onto this area. We're going to be creating a lot more. In fact, you're going to be able to access this park in lots of different locations, but I figured we'd start with one of the more prominent ones, which was the one closest to Sunset City. I decided to keep this fairly simple. I created a uh, little parking area and Using the zoning tool, I made the roads zonable so that we could place one of the entrances to the national park to this parkland. And of course, this area is inspired by Lake Okeechobee. This is a massive, massive lake that sits within Florida. And I figured we couldn't make anything based on Florida without including a lake like this. Uh, I've never been here before, of course. So uh, please let me know what you think we should include in this area. Uh, we do have a couple of things going on. There seems to be a bunch of channels. Uh, I guess they're for flooding or just controlling the water. So we do have a couple of channels that surround our lake. And apart from that, I think we're going to have a lot of farmland around this area and a couple of entrances into a bit of a national park where people can come and visit. Keeping it simple, just adding in a pathway that connects up to the road and then a couple of little lookout areas so that people can sit and chill and look out onto the water. And of course, some alligators. These are some pretty awesome looking props that uh, we are going to be using quite a lot of. Uh, just a couple little sneaky alligators just hanging out on the marshland. And then just keeping the detail pretty simple. A couple of props, some signs, a couple of benches, and just detailing with the trees, just planting them in much better areas and adding in some extra buildings just to increase that land value, which you can see the land value is increasing in this area and helping to boost a bit of the land value and just making Lake Osceola that little bit nicer. And with the added alligators, I figured that this would probably be the best time to start adding in some of the new custom assets made especially for Sunset City. A big part of this series is about creating a custom and unique world that is really only achievable with the help of the wonderful asset creators who are helping me create this series. So these assets that you see me placing down are all by the asset creator by Jack, who you might have already seen on the Steam Workshop. He has very kindly reached out and has created a bunch of amazing assets. These are a uh, whole series of different service vehicles. We have, of course, the road maintenance. We have an ambulance and this whole fire service as well. He's made a bunch and you can find them on the Steam Workshop. There is a link to the asset collection down below if you want to go and check them out. Show them some love as well and big thanks to Jax for doing that. It's uh, so great to see them driving around and just being part of the series. It's it's so amazing. It's really, really cool. And it's not the only one you're going to be seeing in this series. We're going to be placing down a couple of extra things by another asset creator. 
continuing my crusades to improve the land value of Sunset City, I am placing down a school which was definitely needed in this area. This is an elementary school that I'm putting in a little bit of detail, but honestly, not a huge amount. This is the sort of work that I really enjoy in City Skylines is just that trying to create the detail without placing down tons and tons of props and tons of trees and tons of everything, you know? Sometimes you can spend, well, this could have probably been an hour's work, but I decided to try and smash it out just by placing down some benches, some basketball courts, a couple of school buses, we got an American flag, and some trees just placed in the right locations I think makes all the difference. Back to the downtown now because this is a downtown episode and just been spending a bit of time doing other stuff. We are back placing down some bigger buildings, thinking about where they're going to sit. And I decided to work on a little bit of the lower floor of the downtown and place down a police station, which we absolutely needed. I want to put in a little bit of detail on this thing because App and Driver, who is an asset creator on the Steam Workshop, has created a bunch of custom police vehicles that are now driving around the city streets of Sunset City. He's also made a bunch for the Sheriff Department, which we'll have to uh, start placing down when we get out of the city. But for now, we've got some really great assets driving around the city streets. And to show it off, I wanted to create a bit of an impound behind the police station. So adding in a bit of a custom car park so we can place down some of these vehicles. Placing down a couple of these police cars and we've also got these amazing bikes that I can't wait to see driving around the city streets. And then we've also got these vehicles that have been uh, impounded just sitting back there. And uh, this is just the uh, one of many, I mean many of many, that we're going to be seeing uh, in Sunset City. I've been working with a couple of asset creators so there's uh, plenty more to come. Huge shout out to those guys. Adding in some extra details on the ground and also this fence that's going to be acting as a gate into this impound. I decided to finish off this area with some low commercial buildings on this little uh, this little street down here and we're placing down one of many car parks that are going to be occupying the downtown. Removing one of the larger buildings from the skyline and replacing it with a building from Cuba. There's going to be quite a big Latin American influence in Sunset City, so this is just one of many types of buildings like this that we could be placing down. But for now, you can see the city is really coming alive. These buildings are driving a lot of people within the downtown, so it's probably about time that we start giving these people a little bit more in terms of public transport. Don't you hate it when you're taking a cinematic and one of your buildings is on fire? Well, I'm glad to see it's okay. I give full credits to the Sunset City Fire Department for that one. And in terms of the city, in terms of the downtown, it's a bit of a work in progress. I'm happy with probably 60 to 70% of it. Uh, buildings are going to change. They're going to be moving around. And look, I think it's going to be a real work in progress for a little while. Before we start working on the monorail, I want to talk about a couple of things that I want to change and get some ideas from you guys. So first up, this interchange down here. This was one of the first things that I built in the city and it's 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 going to go. <laughs> I need to change it. Uh, it's not really functioning very well and I also don't really like the way it looks. I want to make a bit of a spaghetti disgusting interchange as it stretches into the downtown and then stretches across this bridge. So there's a couple of things going to change with, for that, but I don't really know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've got some ideas, but that's to come for later. And then in terms of the buildings themselves in the downtown, most of them I, I'm pretty happy with. There are some buildings that I have avoided not placing down, but there are some ones that I've placed down that I've got second thoughts about. So for instance, in this corner here, I think that we've got too many. I actually think that I'm probably going to put that one in this location. And this here is just a bit of a temporary thing because I'm just trying to figure out what that corner is going to look like. 
down here is a uh, real work in progress. I'm sort of thinking about putting some sort of park here and I might even extend it to that chunk there. Uh, for now, we're going to leave them because they're going to simulate what it feels like uh, to have buildings like this in a downtown. And as you can see, a lot of them, uh, I mean, they're complaining because there's a real lack of services. I think that as soon as I start placing down this monorail, I think that should solve a few of those problems. And what I'm thinking for this monorail, I'm thinking that it's going to mostly just occupy the space of where the downtown's going to sit. So I'm sort of imagining this kind of area. About, about that. I don't think it's going to go much further than that. And of course with all public transport, I wanted to hit the big, the big places, the places where people are going to try and get to. And the problem is, is that I don't really have those places placed down at the moment, but I do have a little bit of an idea of where they're going to go. Oh, and plus there is this really cool thing where the monorail goes through one of the buildings in Miami and I kind of want to do something similar. I do have this building here that does have a little hole already placed, so I might do that. But the only problem is this building doesn't really match Miami. So we'll kind of, I don't know, we'll have to think about how that's going to look. But I definitely want to do a, uh, a building going, a monorail going through a building. Oh, maybe this could go there. All right, so monorail stop number one. I think I'm going to start over this side because we're going to have just a single bridge heading across this uh, waterway. Uh, you know, they're going to have multiple ones. It's pretty expensive to create bridges. So we're just going to have the one. And uh, I think it's going to go between these two roads and it'll stretch across and then I think it's going to do some sort of loop. Potentially a loop like this, maybe? That's sort of like the bigger buildings, sort of the most important part. So that would probably work the best. And what I'm going to do is have a very simple stop over this way because I think this is where we're going to have some sort of stadium. You know, potentially in this spot we could have... I don't know, maybe some sort of arena or... There's going to be something big over this way. I don't really know what it is yet, but there's going to be something big. I'm going to use these white tile monorail stations. They're far better looking than the vanilla ones. In fact, I don't really mind the vanilla ones. The only thing I don't like about them is the noise radius. Look at that noise. That's a bit ridiculous because monorails don't really make that much noise. I think they're fairly quiet. So... We're going to go this one. It has no noise, which is far more realistic. Oh, I just noticed something. Remember how I said I wanted to build a tunnel going through a building? Well, that's kind of a tunnel there. And it points directly across the water. So maybe... Oh, actually, I've got another idea. Oh, man. That is... That's kind of cool. So I'm just using Mover just to move it around a little bit. And we can totally get away with having a station in the middle of this building, which is so cool. I really didn't think about doing that, but that's actually going to work out really well. All right, so that's already our path. So I'm actually going to drag it from that station there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag it across for now. And then we'll worry about the height difference in a little bit. Now the great thing about monorails is that they're kind of a bit lumpy and all over the place just by nature. I mean, they're typically used by cities because they are so uh, so maneuverable. Like I can actually get away with things like that. I think a good example is if I was just to drag that. I mean, you can see that. <laughs> Look at that bend. That's ridiculous. So I can do a couple of things like a little quick bend there, and then we can connect it up to a station even potentially here. Let's go, you know what, right there. I'm, I'm going to commit. We're just going to place it there. Ten bucks. Too easy. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually giving a little bit of room so that we've got boats coming underneath here because uh, I reckon we're going to have to leave a bit of space for that. You know, this isn't going to be exactly a drawbridge. These bridges are going to be drawbridges, but this one just needs to give plenty of space. So we're going to go pretty high up. And I'm hopefully going to change these pylons because they're not great. So I'm probably going to use procedural objects and stretch out that node. Or stretch out that prop so that we've got a much larger pylon instead of a massive base like that. Now this is super cool because it's going to go really, really close to some of these buildings. And I'm even going to turn off the snapping because I'm happy to make some bends like that as it kind of comes really close to this little alleyway. 
And I actually think it'd be super fun to see it stretch through here, cross the road, and maybe even come through the middle of this. That might be kind of fun. Then it could go through the middle of here and then do its loop. Maybe even connecting back up there so that it goes straight back into the station or can turn left or whatever. I think this is the stop I need here. Uh, what this means is that we have to change this road so that we have some sort of grassy median in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to these roads. I'm going to, nope, these roads and then just upgrade it so that we have actual space to place our station on. And then we've got, <laughs> we, we can't have that. And we can't have people crossing that median either. So what I think I might do is I've got these medians here that I'm going to place right like that. And so that's now a dead end road. And hopefully what I can do is make it so that vehicles can just not turn into this area. So it's still connected, but I'm going to make it so that no one can, in fact, do any any turning into this area uh, like that guy just did. I feel like it's something to do with that. If I turn off those lanes, does that mean that people can no longer get through there? Tell you what, dragging out this monorail line, a lot different to dragging out some of the other options within the game, uh, particularly compared to the train line or even the light rail. These things are really strange. But I guess the the saving grace with this is that monorails do look, the lines are quite jarring and a little bit, <laughs> a little bit like that. Uh, but I can actually smooth a bit of it out. Um, but then we kind of make this jarring turn uh, into this area. Uh, I think that's okay. Like I said, I'm probably going to change this building or we might shuffle this around a bit. Um, but I think that this is going to be a good one because we've got to stop here and we're about to do the loop. And I reckon we've got a, we've got a little bit of room for an extra station. And in terms of that station, well, I guess we want to go between both of these ones. And that really only gives us, we could go right against the water. Or we do have this little, oh man, I mean, that's just made for a monorail station. Let's just get rid of that guy and place that there. And how's that with this bridge? All right, so I could have a little meeting in that section there so that we've got that pillar uh, not clipping in. And the same for that road as well. Well, that works pretty nicely. Hmm, and I don't really want to change this road. I kind of like the way it is. So rather than upgrading this road so that we've got a meat in there, why don't we just select that, we've move it, drop him into the ground, and I think that's going to look a lot better. Now, I know I said that the monorail transitions are a bit jarring, but that's probably a little bit too jarring. So instead of doing that connection there, I reckon we could probably use some of these single single whale, these single rail lines to connect it up instead of doing a transition so, uh, so ridiculous. All right, we are really making a mess down here. The tricky thing that I'm um, experiencing is that I want this to be a fairly smooth arch over this river and making a junction here is causing some some of the a bit of a headache so I think what I can do instead is I might actually connect it straight to this node there and then potentially it connects like that to be honest I am enjoying the ugliness of these transitions um, this one Definitely needs a little bit of extra work. I'm going to do something that I don't... Well, I've actually never done on a monorail line before. And that's using node controller. And we'll see how much control we have here. 
Uh, looks like I've completely just messed it up just by selecting it. So maybe no controller doesn't work on monorails. I don't know. Let's let's give this a go. Yeah, I'm super into that. I think it's gonna probably do a couple little weird things as it travels through there, um, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, we're pretty close to actually seeing this thing run, and hopefully it's gonna function well. Hopefully people are gonna use it. I know the people mover in uh, in Miami, I don't think it's that popular, so we'll see if uh, my system suffers from the same fate, but I sort of think it's going to do pretty well. It's sort of targeting the main areas, and we don't exactly have any other options, so people are kind of stuck with what they've got. And I want you to think of this as phase one of the monorail network, because we're going to extend it. So this is sort of like the city has first installed it, and then it's going to extend as we add in stadiums and uh, other special locations, and we fill out this area a lot better than how it currently looks. Um, but for now, let's connect it up. I reckon we probably need, I'm gonna do two lines. I'm gonna do one that travels from that station to this station, to this one, this one, and this one. As simple as it gets. And then another one that is going to go from here, to here, to here. Oh, do monorails travel back and forth? Oh, they do, fantastic. Uh, that's, I mean, I know that's a bit of a waste, but I just want to say travel across there, and um, I think that'll do for now. And look, <laughs> here we go. One's uh, one's traveling. One's uh, on its way. Super fast. I actually, I'm gonna slow it down quite a lot. Monorails are pretty fast, and I know that it's gonna be operating better if it is going that quick. But that looks a little bit crazy. I don't need it to go 100 kilometers an hour. I would rather it go a lot slower. Let's just try 40. And has that made it 40 for all these networks? Pretty much. In terms of the vehicles, we've got a couple to choose from. I'm trying to find something that's super similar to the Metro Mover in Miami, but there's not really anything on the Steam Workshop at the moment. Uh, if you're an asset creator listening to this, just a, <laughs> I, mean, I would love something like this, would be uh, so amazing. But for now, I'm gonna go for something that's very low capacity, uh, quite small. I actually can't see what these look like, so I'm, I might actually just select them. Let's just get a few, let's get a few rolling on these. Yeah, I think that's the one I want. Something small and it's pretty retro looking. That's that's what I really wanted. Um, again, if there's an asset editor listening to this and is interested in creating something that could be uh, a bit more tailor-made for uh, Sunset City, then I'd I'd so love that. But for now, I think that's probably a good one. I'm gonna get rid of. Okay, I don't need to get rid of it. Get rid of it itself. So we're now running one vehicle for each line. We've got one that travels from this station, this station, that station, and then we've got one that does a full loop. So the four stations in the city center, uh, obviously could be running a little bit more, more efficient. You know, I'm sure that we could probably have this one as part of a uh, bigger loop, but I think I'm just gonna leave it at that because I kind of like that there's a smaller trip and then there's a larger one. And of course this is going to extend out as we, uh, as we progress. Now, I have changed a bit of the color of the line so that we've got duller colors. So that's a dull blue. And where is my red line? You know what, I don't, I don't mind that. I kind of like that color. And people are using it, which is fabulous. Let's, uh, let's give it a little bit of extra time and see how many people are actually going to use this thing. I myself decided to detail this area up, just this little section, just to see what sort of uh, detail work we could create 
Uh, decided to place down a couple more billboards, uh, get in some ones that are a bit more 80s era. This is probably pre-80s, but it still works. And um, I mean, I love this. Looks, it's starting to look really nice. And people are very much using the monorail network, which is excellent. And it's really in its early stages. I mean, you can imagine that when we start placing more buildings in these areas, then more people are going to be using it. But I'm not seeing a huge amount of people on the platforms, mostly because we have so many, uh, it's so fast and there's so many stops that the monorail targets these areas pretty quickly. And then I think when we add a couple of extra stops and even more public transport like buses and the uh, metro line, then we're going to see more ridership and when more buildings being placed down as well, I think it's going to see a little bit more usage. But the thing that's been really great is that it's solved a lot of that problem with the low amount of services in this area. So some of these buildings that were just very unhappy are now super happy which is excellent, except for this guy. But I think, you know, you can just get out of here. Um, but for now, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's episode. This was a fun one to put together and super cool to start seeing the downtown and a bit of the public transport being taken care of in Sunset City. Shout out to my patrons who are wonderful and make videos like this possible. SP, Laura Braun, Marcus Allen, Samuel Steltzer, Anthony Smith, Riley Callahan, Ryan, Geordie, Thompson Applin, Rixo12, Y100921, Christopher Wren, Demo Cooper, and Nick Serafleen. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all in the next one.